Good morning, everyone. May the Lord richly bless you in the hearing of His Word. The title of today's message is The Parable of the Sower. But the subtitle would be, What Type of Soil Are We? This text is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 3 through 23. You know, I searched high and low for a joke about planting seeds and growing crops, but the closest joke I could find is titled Fertilizer. And it goes like this. A farmer was driving down a long country road with a full load of fertilizer. A little boy was playing in his front yard, and he saw him driving by and called out saying, What you got in your truck, mister? Fertilizer, the farmer replied. Well, what are you going to do with it? asked the little boy. I'm going to put it on my strawberries, answered the farmer. You ought to come live here with us, the little boy told him. We put sugar and cream on ours. <laughs> okay, that's not the funniest joke in the world, but do you know how hard it is to find a joke about good soil? It's really tough. In any case, let's look now at a brief introduction. We've just finished our series on the Sermon on the Mount, and I really enjoyed that, and I hope you did too. So today we're starting a new series. After prayerfully considering, I decided to stay in the Gospels and work our way through the parables of Jesus. These are wonderful lessons for all generations that need to be examined and explained. So what are parables and why does Jesus use them? Well, a parable is a simple story that helps people to understand a spiritual lesson. Each story fits the audience that Jesus is speaking with. Today's parable focuses on planting seeds and growing crops, but it actually has more to do with the types of soil that allows the seeds to grow. Does anyone here have a green thumb? Well, I sure don't. This city slicker doesn't know anything about gardening. Well, I didn't know anything in the past, but I've learned a lot of tough lessons in life, so I'll share a few relevant stories with you today. So let's get started. Jesus begins the parable of the sowing seeds by describing the seeds that fell on the footpath. And this is covered in Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 4, and today I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads as follows. He told many stories in the form of parables such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. So, where was Jesus when he gave this parable? Apparently, Jesus was in an area of Israel with a large farming community. Some people may ask, how do we know this? because he's telling a story that farmers would understand. So let's first think about how seeds are scattered. I doubt very seriously that farmers would carefully plant each seed in a hole. That would take too long. No, they probably grabbed a handful of seeds and threw them across the land to get a wide dispersion. Try as they might to keep the seeds on the best dirt, lots of seeds fell in other places. In this case, some seeds fell on a hard path, not getting down inside the dirt. And I know how the birds love that. So let me tell you a story. After 10 years of service in the United States Air Force, I left the island of Guam and I came back to Florida. And it was about that time in my life I realized I needed to settle down, so I decided to buy a home. And I found one that I really liked and I went uh, to signed the deal to purchase the house. And while I was there, one of the people said, listen, you know, before you buy this house, would you like for us to plant sod and grass and put in a sprinkler system in your home? And I was a little tight on money and I didn't want to spend too much. And I thought, well, it rains a lot in Florida, so we don't need a sprinkler system. And a lawn, well, who can't plant seeds? So I thought, no thanks, I'll just do that on my own. So that day, I went down to the base exchange, which is like the Walmart of the military base, and I bought the best grass seed I could find. I examined the bags and I looked at the ingredients and it said that this bag of expensive seed had 99% grass and only 1% weed. So I spent that extra money and bought it. I went home and I got some fertilizer and I got one of those little spreader things, a little green box that you twirl around and it throws the fertilizer out. 
I went home and I began spreading the seeds all over my hard, flat front lawn. Well, the seeds, uh, some of it landed in the dirt, <laughs> but a lot of it went all over the place. I had seed on the street, I had seeds in the driveway, on the sidewalk, in the flower bed, they just went everywhere. So, after a few weeks of constantly watering the seeds, I decided to come home from lunch to see if my, my yard was growing, if the grass was growing. And so I turned the corner and I looked at my house about half a block down the road and from a distance, my front yard was completely black. And I didn't know what was going on. That black color seemed to be moving just a little bit. And I was very confused. The closer I got in my car, I could see more clearly and I realized my front yard was covered with birds, blackbirds, thousands and thousands of blackbirds. Apparently the seeds had germinated and every bird in Florida decided to come have a feast on my front yard. Try as I might to scare the birds off, they would just come back and continue eating. And it didn't take them long to gobble up every seed that I had planted. So I do know firsthand about planting seeds on a hard footpath that the birds will eat. So let's go ahead and get back and take a look at the message. As a result of the seeds falling on a footpath, the birds quickly came and ate them up, just like in my yard. Okay, so parables have a deeper spiritual meaning. Jesus was teaching us a spiritual lesson here, and he wasn't trying to teach us about the wrong way to plant. So what is a spiritual lesson? Jesus tells us the true meaning further down in verses 18 through 19 by saying, now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. First off, they simply don't understand the message of the kingdom. Then Satan, the enemy of our souls and the father of all lies, snatches away the word as fast as he can. He does not want anyone to hear the message of God's love and forgiveness and to get saved. But I wondered, why is the message not received? They heard the message, right? Sure they did, but their hearts were hard, just like that footpath, and the word did not sink in. Maybe it simply didn't make sense to them, or it was just too hard to believe. Remember what Scripture says? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. Do we know anyone like this? Well, it sounds a lot like me as a young boy. I heard the message, but I couldn't understand it. It just didn't sink in. And Satan came and stole it away from me. But you know what? I'm not alone. This happens to a lot of people. Next, Jesus moves on to describe the seeds that fell on shallow, rocky soil, covered in verses 5 and 6, which read, Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow but the plants soon withered under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Okay, let's get a mental picture of this type of ground. So there's a small layer of soil on top of underlying rocks, so the soil is very shallow, maybe just a couple of inches deep. This shallow dirt is not enough for the roots to grow down deep enough to reach water, that it needs to survive the heat and to grow. So, the seeds are essentially on death row, and their days are numbered. So let me continue with my story in Florida about my grass planting episode. After my first venture of the seeds on the hard path and the birds eating them all up, um, I left the house that day and I was driving to work and I noticed there were some state workers along the highway. 
and they were holding this big tube and they were shooting green foam all over the embankment next to the highway and I didn't know what they were doing. When I got to work I asked some of my coworkers about that and they said, Doug, those are fellows that are planting seeds along the highway. And I was confused and they recognized that and they continued. They said this foam sprays out and it has seed inside of it and it sticks to the dirt and it allows water in but it prevents the birds from eating them up. So I raced over to the base exchange one more time and I bought the most expensive seed that I could find packed in foam. I went home and I laid it all out on the lawn carefully and I watered these seeds for weeks. It was about time to germinate. And one day I woke up and I realized that the seeds were growing. My yard was starting to turn green. I continued to water it and the grass grew. And then before long, a couple of days later, I noticed that the grass started dying. My yard was turning brown and I didn't understand. I bought good seed, I watered it, Things were going great, but the whole lawn was dead. In my frustration, I took uh, a hoe out of the garage and I started hoeing up the ground to find out what was going on. And lo and behold, I found out that about two inches below my entire front lawn was a bed of rocks. I was furious. The roots couldn't grow past the rocks. So I got some friends together and we spent the next week sitting out in our front lawn picking buckets of rocks out of the ground so that the seeds could grow. And um, so we'll stop this story here and pick it up in the next segment during this message. While that's an interesting story, let's go back and discover the meaning of the rocky soil as described in verses 20 and 21. The seeds on the rocky soil represented those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Okay, so our faith needs to put down roots deep enough to sustain us when troubles come our way and problems abound in our lives that causes doubt and unbelief. Those with shallow faith may ask, God, where are you? Why don't you help me now? They immediately doubt God even when the smallest problems arise or someone puts them down for their faith. Here are some examples of shallow soil or rocky ground when the hot sun starts to burn. Say you lose your job or the job that you have is horrible. Why, Lord, why is this happening to me? If you're real, why don't you get me out of this? Or say you have an unexpected bill or something expensive breaks and you need to replace it. Where is this money coming from, Lord? God, where are you? Why did you let this happen to me? Or friends or coworkers start slamming the Christian faith. Then they ask you, you're not one of them, are you? And the weak will say, who, me? No, I'm not one of them. How sad is that? But in all these examples, doubt and unbelief is a common problem. If people turn away from faith in God over such little things as this, then their faith was indeed shallow. But as for us, we stand firm. Our faith is deeply rooted and we will not wither under the hot sun. But there are still two other types of ground. Next, Jesus goes on to describe the seeds that fell among the thorns in verse 7, which reads, Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Hmm, thorns. Don't you just hate those things? I do. Sharp, painful plants that seem to thrive everywhere. They're right up there with those prickly weeds. They're always in the way and they're very hard to remove. So let me continue on one more time with my story about Florida. We left off with uh, the grass that had died and digging out all the rocks so that the, the grass seeds could find deeper ground. This time, 
I went back to the BX, the base exchange, and I bought some seed. Now my money was starting to run a little thin here, so I couldn't afford the best seed in the world, and I just picked up the old bargain basement bag of grass seed. So I drove back home, and I planted the seeds and began to water it in hopes that my lawn would turn out well. A few weeks later, the seeds germinated and began to grow. Once again, I was extremely excited to see a lawn full of green grass, and it grew quickly. In fact, it wasn't long that I had to go buy a lawnmower and a weed whacker so that I could maintain my brand new lawn. And so one Saturday morning, I woke up and I was cutting the grass as hard as I could, and I was weed whacking. I'm sure all the neighbors were watching me. And I was just about finished doing all my work. And one of the men from a real nice house down the road pulled up in front of my yard right next to me, rolled down his window, and he said, Sir, he said, I just got to tell you. He said, You have the best manicured weeds I have ever seen in my life. And I went, What? <laughs> he said, Yes, sir. He said, Your yard is nothing but weeds. There's no grass in it. And I looked and I examined the grass more closely, and by golly, he was right. All the grass was missing. It was nothing but weeds. The weeds had grown up and choked the grass out, just like the thorns in that parable. I was furious. I had done so much work, and I was getting no results, and I'd learned so many lessons. But just so you'll know, in time, I finally figured it out. But let's go ahead and get back to the story so we can talk about the lessons that Jesus wants to teach us. So, the spiritual meaning of the thorns is revealed in verse 22, which reads, The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. Okay. This is a major problem for many Christians. Climbing the corporate ladder to success and making money. Many believers place these goals at the top of their priority list, which doesn't leave much time for their faith. All too often I hear, sorry, I don't have time for church or Bible studies or reading or prayers. I gotta make that money, don't you know? Hmm, what's wrong with this picture? I guess these are good examples of the message being crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. And to make matters worse, these things make us unproductive in our faith. We are not growing, we are not doing anything to help others, and we are not sharing our faith. It's all about power, prestige, and money. As a result, we become spiritually stagnant, just like the Dead Sea. Water in, nothing going out. This looks like a perfect scheme of the devil. But know this, Satan cannot take our faith away, but he sure can make us unproductive with distractions like these. May this never be with us. Okay, so far Jesus has told us about three types of bad soil that hampers the growth of seeds. But now we are told about seeds that fell on fertile soil in verse 8, which reads, Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Now for the success story. How would we describe fertile soil? Me, not being a farmer, I would describe it as loose, soft, not compacted, moist, rich with nutrients and minerals, something excellent for growing crops. And fertile soil produced an abundance of crop. Today, my stories have been about growing grass, but crops are different. You plant one seed, and when it grows, it makes many others. In Israel, they grew wheat, barley, figs, grapes, and olives. One seed of each type plant would result in a large increase of the same item. While I don't know much about these crops, I do know a little bit about corn. So let me tell you yet another story of my youth. 
As a young boy, I grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, and I had lots of family that lived out in the country. My uncles were large farmers, and every few years we would get together and have a family reunion. And the ladies would ask the children to go out in the morning with big baskets and pick fresh corn off the cob and bring it in and shuck the corn so that we could have a nice meal. I was so impressed. That food tastes so good. It was unlike store-bought. So now I know the meaning of farm fresh vegetables. And I was just in awe of the size of the farm that my uncle had. Waves and waves of cornfields, beans, carrots, you name it, he had it. Tomatoes, just non-stop vegetables in these fields. And it was massive. I also looked around and I saw this shed full of these large, large tractors with four rear wheels about 10 feet high and all of these tools that connected to it to grind up the dirt and to till the soil. And it, I realized that it took an awful lot of effort to grow these crops. So I realized that a few bags of seed resulted in truckloads of produce. But it took good soil to grow and it took a lot of work. Tilling the ground, planting the seeds, fertilizing the soil, watering the seeds every day. Okay, let's get back to the meaning of the good soil in verse 23, which reads, The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as has been planted. Here Jesus says that the word of God lands on the hearts of people who truly hear and understand it. That's good soil. And as people apply the word to their lives, it produces a harvest. And that would be a harvest of what? Well, I suppose it would be a harvest of saved souls. When the word is planted in our hearts, it grows up and produces the fruit of the Spirit, which changes us and touches the lives of other people. When we plant the word of God in their hearts, the cycle keeps going on and on. See how that works? Yeah. What a concept. May it be that way with us. So now that we've looked at the different types of soils, it begs the question, what type of soil are we? So this is the ultimate question. As we read the scriptures, we need to examine ourselves to see what we look like. In this case, what type of soil are we? Are our hearts so hard that the word of God cannot enter? If so, Satan will quickly come and take it away from us so that we cannot believe and be saved. Or our hearts shallow with a heart of stone not far below the surface. If so, our faith has no depth and we will fall away when troubles come our way. Has that happened to anyone here? Or our hearts crowded out by the thorns, the worries of life and the desire to make money. Are we trying so hard to achieve in life that we don't have time for church, Bible studies, prayer, or worship? Can anyone relate to this? Or do we have good hearts that are tender and seeks to understand God's ways? With this heart, we go out and share the faith and help those in need, demonstrating the love of Jesus, planting new seeds wherever we go. Okay. Let's say we fall in one of those less than perfect categories, then that begs the question, if we're not fertile soil, can we change? Or are we stuck in that condition forever? And the answer is a resounding, yes, we can change. God does not want us to be unfruitful. I know this because the Bible tells us a story to understand God's desire for us. So listen to the story of the barren fig tree which reads, A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but didn't find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. 
So let's learn from this story. The farmer did not want to give up on his unproductive plant. So he went to great lengths to work the soil and to tend the plant in an effort to bring about change. I believe that God will do the same for us. If we are not producing fruit because our soil is not right, He will go to great lengths to recondition our hearts to hear the Word of God and to produce much fruit for His kingdom. So if anyone here feels a little less than perfect, let's pray and ask God to make our hearts that fertile soil that He desires. Our Father in heaven, we praise Your holy name and worship You publicly this day. Thank you, Jesus, for this parable that helps us to understand what type of hearts we have. If you find us lacking in any area of faith, help us change our ways so we can produce much fruit for your kingdom. Be with us this week as we interact with those who don't know you. Soften our hearts to be kind and gracious toward others so they can see your love in us. Help us to be focused and totally committed to you rather than concerned about the worries of this life and the lure of riches. For we know those things have no eternal value, but knowing you is our ultimate goal. We love you, Lord, and we ask all these things in your precious name. Amen.